The Green Hornet. He hunts the biggest of all game. Public enemies who try to destroy our America. With his faithful Filipino valet, Cato, Britt Reed, daring young publisher, matches wits with racketeers and saboteurs. Risking his life that criminals and enemy spies will feel the weight of the law by the sting of the Green Hornet. Ride with Britt Reed in the thrilling adventure, Murder and the Dope Racket. The Green Hornet strikes again. Eaton Waterbury, respected wholesale druggist, reached across his desk and picked up the phone. Hello? Hello, Waterbury? Yes, who is this? This is Spencer. I wanted oh, to... Oh, it's you, Doc. What's up? Plenty. Listen, Waterbury, I'm through. Do you hear? From now on, you can do... Now, you... hold on, Doc. Control yourself. Why do you say you're through? I'm calling from my home. A while ago, I received a phone call from another doctor in town here. Well... He said a patient of mine, a Miss Violet Hill, had just left his office after coming there for a checkup. What about it? Well, what about it? Just this. He said he found nothing wrong with it. He called me to ask what I was treating her for. She's been coming to me every other day, and I've been giving her those pills of yours. You think she's become suspicious, huh? There's no doubt of it. I don't know what she can tell the police. She may have some of those pills around. I'm going down to my office and clear out my files. Then I'm moving out before the police start an investigation. So that's it. Well, listen, Spencer, you're in this too deep to run out and ditch the whole deal? Say what you like, but once and for all, I'm through. Goodbye. So he's through, is he? Rip! Rip! What do you want, boss? You and Blevy, come here. Hurry. Okay. Hey, Blevy! Boss wants it. Come on. What's up, boss? Yeah, you want it all found. Come in and shut the door. Doug Spencer just phoned. Says he's through. He's at home packing, getting ready to clear out. Why, yeah, that's he, dirty. He can't do that. Like I always say, he knows too Quiet, much. Quiet, Blippi. You two listen to me. Take the car. Go over to the Hill Girl's apartment. She may have some of those pills that may be traced to my drug company. Make her give them to you before you get rid of her. Right. If she won't tell where they are, bring her to me here. Okay. One thing more. Before you go to her place, get over to Doc Spencer's right away, and, uh... Well, I think you'll know what to do about him. Now get going. A short time later, Red and Blabby sat in a car which was parked at the curb, a short distance from the entrance to Spencer's home. As soon as he comes out of the door, we gotta get moving fast, Blabby. Be ready. Yeah, being ready pays, like I always say, Red. I remember the time I was going to... Here he comes. I'll get going. Yeah, it's him, all right. Keep close to the curb, Blabby. And count on me, Red. I bet when you see... Shut up. Hold her steady now. This is it. Hey! Wait! Stop! Step on it, Blabby. <laughs> Hey, our lady, read all about the machine gun killing. Oh, Here you are, sir. Such a luxury paper. Mike Axford, Sentinel reporter, was at police headquarters waiting to get further news of the murder from Sergeant Burke. Hey, Sarge, anything new? Where have you been? In with the inspector. Cassidy, go bring a squad car around to the door and hurry it up. Okay, Sarge. Uh, what's the inspector say, Sarge? Where are you going? Before you spill over with any more questions, I'll tell you. 
The inspector says he got a complaint against Doc Spencer just a short time before we got news of the murder. A complaint? What about, Sarge? A girl by the name of Violet Hill said the Doc had been selling her dope pills. Dope, you say? Hey, do you think that I some... don't do the thinking around here. At least not in front of reporters. I'm going to pick up that girl for questioning. Do they think she did the killing? How do I know what they think? Anyway, she won't be safe when those killers find out she complained. Aha! Uh-huh. So the inspector thinks twas a dope ring gang that killed Spencer, I bet. Keep your thinking to yourself, Axford. I didn't say anything come about... Come on, Sarge. Be right with you. Uh, can I come, Sarge? How about it? Oh, come on, if it'll keep you quiet. Let's get going. Meantime, Violet Hill was resting in her small one-room apartment when the door buzzer sounded. Just a minute. Yes? What can I... Oh. Keep quiet and get out of the way. But you can't come in. I... Get back in there, I said. Stop it. Who are you? You'll find out. Come on in, Blabby. Oh. Why have you come here? Go fast, sister. Where's the pills you got from Doc Spencer? Pills? Don't Why, play I... innocent, girlie. Come across with those pills. We heard you were going to squeal to the cops. I already complained to the police. I. You must have killed Spencer. You knew that Shut if... Shut up. Blabby, tear this joint apart and find those pills. Sure, Aunt. Sure. All right. I do have some of the pills. But they aren't here. I left them with someone else. So go ahead and search all you want to. You know too much, baby. Hey, Red, shall I take a Forget look? Forget it, Blabby. Listen, sister. You're too smart for your own good, see? You're going with us. The boss will want to talk to you. I'm not going to leave this apartment. Uh, listen to that, will you? Let's bump her off. Shut up. They will get it soon enough. Grab her. No! Don't you dare touch me! Uh, Either of you! Spunky, ain't she, Red? Now, take it easy. You won't get hurt. You let me go. Cover her mouth, Flabby. Let me go! Oh! She kicked me, Red. Don't let a little dame get the best of you. Here, tie her hands with a handkerchief. Slap her if she squawks. Okay. I'll have her tight in a second. Please. You... Please let me go. I won't say anything to anybody. I promise you. late, sister. You already did. Now, if you don't want a gag in your mouth, keep quiet. I won't go with you. I won't. Hold her, Blabby. <gasps> now, if you know what's good for you, you come along quiet. I'll have this rod stuck right into your side all the way. I'll come with you. Darn right you will, sister. Like I always say when the boss tells Stow us... Stow it, Blabby. Okay, girlie. Get moving. And walk out like we're all friends, see? Now, get going. It was dusk when Axford entered the office of Britt Reed, young publisher of the Daily Sentinel, in a state of excitement. Say, Reed! Axford, Mr. Reed signing letters. Why, well, Casey, I got important news. Here are the letters, Miss Case. What is it, Axford? Reed, things are popping off on that Spencer case. They have a line on the killers? No, but the cops are sure the doc was mixed up in a dope ring. Do they really believe that, or is that just your own idea? Don't be buttoning, Casey. Well, what about the dope ring angle? Reed, the thing's busting out all over with angles. You see, a girl named Violet Hill put in a complaint at headquarters just a little before the murder. Said Spencer was selling her dope. Have they picked up the girl in connection with the killing? I'm coming to that, Reed. Well, do the police think she killed him? Quiet, Casey! The cops don't tell me what they think. And if they Actually, did, I wouldn't... <laughs> what about Violet Hill? Oh, oh, yeah. I went along with Sarge when he went to pick her up. And what do you think? Go on. She disappeared. Skipped out, huh? Nope. Somebody took her away by force. You mean she's been abducted? Yeah, that's it. Well, how do you know? Reed, the apartment was a mess. Chairs overturned and all, like she put up a struggle. I see. Oh, the poor thing. If the police believe Spencer was mixed up in a dope ring. I know what you mean, Reed. And again, the racketeers got the jump. How? I went with Sarge and the boys over to Spencer's office. The piles had been cleared out before we got there. Oh, looks as though the gang knows how to cover up. That they do, Reed. Are there any clues at all? Not a one. Sarge is raving. Says he's stumped with not a clue to go on. Just think. A murder and a disappearance both within a few hours and not a clue to go on. Yes, and if something isn't done soon, there may be a second killing. You mean they... Yes, Violet Hill. If she's not found soon, they may be too late to save her life. Early that evening, Britt Reed went to his apartment where Cato... His faithful Filipino valet and the only person knowing his identity as the Green Hornet was waiting. Cato? 
The gang that murdered Dr. Spencer is just as liable to murder Violet Hill. Spencer was not a reputable physician. Why do you say that, Mr. Britt? I checked up on him. Before he came to the city, he was investigated by the medical association. But nothing was proved. I'd like to know who recommended him to Miss Hill. Well, you think police right? That he in with dope ring? There's no doubt about it. I wonder if there was any little thing in his desk or files the police overlooked. It's easy for Green Hornet to find out. Come on. We'll take the Black Beauty and go to his office. Stepping through a secret panel in the rear of a closet in his bedroom, Britt Reed and Cato went along a narrow passageway built within the walls of the apartment itself. This passage led to an adjoining building which fronted on a dark side street. Though supposedly abandoned, this building serves as the hiding place for the sleek, super-powered Black Beauty, streamlined car of the Green Hornet. Britt Reed pressed a button. The great car roared into life. A section of the wall in front raised automatically, then closed as the gleaming Black Beauty sped into the darkness. Leave the Black Beauty here and behind the medical building. In this dark spot, it won't be noticed. You know floor office on? Yes, it was mentioned in the story of the killing. We'll use the back stairs. The office is on the second floor. Keep your eyes open. The police may be watching the place. Let's go. Moving noiselessly in the shadows, the sinister figure of the Green Hornet and his companion approached the back door of the building. Using a skeleton key, they soon effected an entrance and made their way up the back stairs to suite 202. The same key unlocked the door to Dr. Spencer's offices. We use flashlight or turn on office lights? We'll risk the office lights if I can find the switch. Yeah, here it is. Good thing we not meet any police. Yes, we've been lucky so far. Well, this is the receptionist's office. Yeah, that must be the doctor's office beyond. I turn on lights in here. Now, there are the files. Come on. Yeah. Not a scrap of any kind left in them. Oh, that right. Go over and look through the desk. Desk empty, too. I was afraid of that. Well, right now I'm stumped. I guess the best thing to Put do is... your hands up, both of you, or I'll let you have it. Oh, the building guard. Right. I saw the light and sneaked in, just in time to get the drop on the green hornet and the masked helper. Come over here near the hornet, you, and keep them hands up. This not good. Do as he says for the time being. Stop whispering. You make the least move, I'll drill you. The next move is yours, my friend. You're darn right it is. I'm phoning the cops. Operator, get police headquarters quick. Send them to 202 Medical Building. Tell them I cornered the Green Hornet. Reed, with Cato beside him, stood facing a gun in the hands of the burly guard who had just phoned the police. Britt sized up the situation quickly and realized that the man before them was not to be taken lightly. He noticed particularly that the guard held a revolver and not an automatic. As a plan of action came to mind, he played for time, hoping to turn the odds before the arrival of the police. You're taking a big chance. We're two to one, you know. Yeah. Well, don't think that'll help. You try to pull any fast moves together, you'll get a bullet, see? I'm pointing this gun right at your heart, Hornet. Yes, yeah, so I notice. A rather uncomfortable feeling, too. Say, uh, maybe we can make a deal. <laughs> Not a chance. Oh, well, I guess the cops will get the $10,000 I have in my coat pocket. 
Too bad I... I'd have been willing to split. Ten thousand bucks, huh? Who are you trying to kid, Hornet? Forget it. You aren't interested anyway. And you'll have to split up the reward you get for my capture with all the cops who come here. And they're coming right now. Maybe I am interested in that dough. But I don't have to make a deal. I can take all of it right now. Why, you... I'm going to see if you have that dough on you. But this gun will be pressed right against your chest, so don't make a move. Now, just look in your pocket. As the guard stepped close, pressing the revolver against Britt's chest and reaching toward his coat pocket, Britt Reed suddenly dropped his hand, grabbing the cylinder of the revolver in a tight grip so it couldn't turn. Hey, wake up! Now that you can't pull the trigger, I'll... Oh, that good trick. I almost think we not get away this time. We still won't if we don't hurry. Let's get out of here and fast! Later that evening, Eaton Waterbury sat at his desk in the front office of his warehouse on Water Street. Hey, boss. There's something in the paper you ought to see. Look here. What is it, Jim? See? Right there. Green Hornet at Wits Guard at Medical Building. Escapes from Spencer's office. Wonder why he went there, Wait boss. a minute. Police have stated that the appearance of the Green Hornet in the Spencer's office earlier this evening may bring about new developments in the Spencer murder and the Violet Hill abduction... Say, Red, this is something. Yeah, but that ain't all, boss. Look what it says there. Where? Here. Oh, that. Let's see. The Daily Sentinel offers a reward of $35,000 for information leading to the capture of the Green Hornet. That's a lot of dough, boss. Now that the Hornet's getting the blame for everything, we're in the clear. I was thinking. What were you thinking, Red? If they was to catch that guy, we'd not only be safe, but we could get the dough, too. You must be crazy. What information could either of us give that would lead to the capture of the Hornet? Well, I was thinking, if they was to catch somebody they thought was the Hornet, after we tip them off, well? Uh, what's on your mind? Look, Blabby's been back there in the back room all evening watching that dame, see? And he never reads the papers. Blabby, but how do you figure they're treating... I got a plan. I'll go back and take his place. Tell Blabby you want to see him. Then here's what you tell him to do. Want to see me, boss? Red says you do, and... Like I always say, whenever you want anything... I know, I know, Blebby, when I have something very important to do, I trust you to do it better than Red. Of course, I wouldn't uh, want you to tell him I said so. Oh. But, uh... <laughs> I ain't telling him anything, boss. Like I always say, if you yes, talk yes, too much... Yes, of course. Now, listen, Blebby. I have a very important errand for you to do. And there'll be a bonus in it for you if you do it right. A bonus? Honest? Right. Now, uh, look... You remember that girl's apartment? Oh, sure. Sure, over on the west side. I don't ever forget places. After all, like I always say, if you do it, yes, then you yes, might... Yes, 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 yes. Now, here's what I want you to do. She won't talk. Maybe those pills are there. Go over there, search her apartment. <laughs> For that, I get a bonus? Well, that ain't much to do. I was telling Red... You Lord, have to be very careful on this job. You mustn't be recognized. Uh, nobody get a chance We to. can take chances. So I want you to put this mask on when you get inside the building. Do you understand? Uh, black mask with a funny-looking bug on it. Uh, what's that supposed to be? Ever hear of the Green Hornet? Green Hornet? <laughs> Creepers, who ain't heard of that guy? What? I remember once uh, when I was... Skip it. I sent Red down the street to get this at Jake's place. He sells him for Halloween. You stick that on when you get there. Now get going. You ought to be over there in about 20 minutes or so. Here's the mask. Okay, boss. Meantime, Britt Reed and Cato had returned to their apartment and spent some time discussing the case. Well, now that papers blame Hornet, police hunt him instead of others. As a matter of fact, Cato, I phoned Gunnigan and told him to play the story of Big and to feature the reward notice. I know. Well, why you do that? Hoping it might cause the killers to make a false move. Hello? This is Ashford Reed. Gunnigan just got a tip over the phone that the Hornet's going to be at Violet Hill's place about 10 o'clock. 
It's quarter off now. Did the person give his name? Called himself Red. Said if the harlot's caught, he'll come in tomorrow and identify himself to get the reward. Said it was because of that he caught us instead of the cops. I see. I'm going to phone headquarters now. Then I'm going to get Sarge to pick me up and take me out with him. Fine, Axford, you do that. And have Gunnigan get ready for an extra. Sure, he'll be ready. I told him I was going to get a scoop. Be seen, you read. So long. So, bye. Cater, what's a phony tip? But someone called and said the Hornet was to be at that girl's place at 10. But if Axford tell police to go out there... Yeah, we're much don't... closer to the west side than they are at headquarters. Of course, they'll radio the scout cars, but we'll have to risk it. Come on, and hurry! Let's see. Yeah, none of that stuff here. Oh, well... Like I always say, it ain't no use warning when you get... Hey, what the... Don't make a move, Mug. Hey, you... You must be the real Hornet. So what? What's the idea of that mask? Now, now look, Hornet. The boss just thought it up, see? It don't mean nothing. This mask, I mean, it, it's just so I won't be... Who sent you here? The, the, the boss sent me. Honest. Like I said, it don't mean a thing. I heard you the first time. Hear that, the police. Do you want me to let you have it and leave you here for them? Or will you come along with me? Oh, hey, I don't want to meet up with any cops. Let me get out of here. You're getting out the back way with me. And this gun will be right in your back. Now move and make it snappy. Now that we've lost the police for a while, you can start talking. What's your name? Um, uh, my name is Blabby Hooker. I... Uh, was just getting some stuff for the boss out of that desk. And look on it. Let me go and Take me, me to your boss. Oh, no, no. I ain't never welched on nobody, Hornet. Like I always say, Listen I... Listen to me. Don't you realize you were framed? You were sent out there, and then your friends called the police so you'd be picked up. What? Sure. You don't think I had the police come out there, do you? But why should they frame me? What if could... you were picked up as the Hornet, they'd get $35,000. That's why. Play along with me, and we can turn the tables on them. How? Take me to your boss. We'll get the drop on him, put the mask on him, and then you can send the cops there, get it? And I get dough? Dough? You'll get your share of everything that's coming. You can count on that. How about it, Blabby? It's a deal. I'll tell you where to go. This the place? Yeah. The light's out in the front office. It must be in the back room. You not forget phone call to police. Oh, Blabby. Before we go in, my friend here will tip off the police. Then we'll surprise them. Why not be long? <laughs> I'll show you how to get in the back way. Won't they be surprised? Like I always say, when you double cross You anybody... said it, Blabby. There'll be plenty of surprises tonight. Bridge, you can go out in a little while and get the news. Yeah, they ought to have them by now. Say, boss, we'll have to do something about the girl. Can't just keep her here bound and gagged like that. Sometime during the night, Red, it'll be your job to get rid of her for good. Yeah, she knows too much now. After we get that reward, we'll go easy with the dope racket for a while. Hey, hey look, it's Blabby. With the green hornet. Get him, Blabby, quick. I'll get him, all right. With a dirty double cross. Blabby, you. <laughs> Wait, Blabby. You don't know what you're doing. Like I always say, rats ain't worth Wait. listening to. <laughs> if I can get this rod free, I'll Killer show type, you. Hey. hey, sock him, Hornet. He's waving that rod around like crazy. Good advice, Blabby. <laughs> what a sock and a kisser that was. Like I always say, when you sock him, make him stay socked. Now I'll stick this mask on the boss. <laughs> Won't he be surprised? Wait a minute. Like I always say, it's no use doing something you don't have to do. Take a sniff of this. Hey, wh what's the idea? Gas! Gas! I can't... Let's take care of everything, perhaps. Better hurry before police come. All right. The girl can give the police the evidence against these killers. The police will untie her. Let's go. Oh, what's the idea of waking me in the middle of the night? 
Can't wait till morning. Read, the cops got them all, every last one of them. And they found the girl safe and sound. Got who, Maxford? What are you raving about? The dog peddlers who murdered Doc Spencer, that's who. Really? Then they caught the Green Hornet. Nope. But Eden Waterbury, the wholesale druggist, was the ringleader. And the girl, Violet Hill, told so much on them all, they had to confess. Uh huh. But I still want to know about the Green Hornet. Ah, uh, what's the use? Every time we get a big scoop, you want a bigger one. Twas the Hornet who blew his top and messed them all up so the cops found him. But of course, the, the Hornet, Hornet got, got away. Ah. <laughs> I might have known. Reed, to my way of thinking, you don't know what it is to be surprised about anything. Oh, life is boring, isn't it, Axel? Ah, <laughs> boy. <laughs> 